Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is actually very easy to make, but it's a really cool sound. I'm a huge fan of the theremin. I think that instrument is really cool, and when you actually play one, it's a lot of fun. So it's kind of hard to really recreate that instrument in a digital sense because with the real theremin, you're using your hand to lower the pitch and the vibrato and kind of stuff like that. So you're playing it with your body, whereas with a synth, you're playing the keys and you have macros and stuff. So it's a little bit different, but the core concept still remains. So with that being said, it kind of sounds like this, a little scary theremin. All right, so let's get into this one. This one's super simple, but it's really fun to work with. So for the first engine here, let's turn off our effects here because it can be kind of a little bit distracting. So for engine number one, we have a triangle wave, and that's kind of the base shape you want to do with. You can get away with a sine wave, but really with a triangle wave, a little bit more harmonics, and it helps a lot with the distortion later on to make it a little bit more creepy. Now, what we're doing here is on the fine. This is really where it gets that character, that kind of vibrato sound, right? And that's all done with LFO1. Now, if you see every time I hit it, you can see the shape change a little bit. Now, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Let's take a look under the hood here. So, LFO 1. So, this rate is about 4.7, anywhere from like three high, high mid threes to maybe like fives. It's kind of a good range for almost a vocal type of vibrato. So, that's kind of where it landed on here. So, 4.7 hertz. The retrigger source is going to be poly keyboard. And the reason for that is because we have fade on. So if we kind of move this a little bit, we can see this little gray graphic kind of appear, and it's kind of like a fade into this LFO. So once we hit a note and trigger the LFO, it's not going to start at its maximum amplitude. It's going to fade into that. So it starts slowly up and down, up and down. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it finally reaches its main amplitude, which if you think about it, that's kind of how vibratos work when people sing or when a theremin is played kind of nicely. So that is the concept with that right there. Now we don't have any unison because this is kind of just one tone here. We're using one engine with one oscillator, which is a triangle. And that's really it going to one filter, which is the Jupiter 8, because this one seems kind of soft and kind of not so aggressive. So it's kind of smoothing this sound out a little bit because it can get very annoying, right? That like vibrato with a triangle with distortion, it can be kind of harsh. So we want kind of a smooth filter to kind of tame that down a little bit. So that's why it's going to be on the Jupiter 8 on a low pass 12, which is also tied to macro number two as it's labeled intuitively cut off. Moving on from there, let's check out the effects to make it a little bit more spooky. So <laughs> on FXA, we have a tape echo, right? So this is kind of going to be a delay, but it's going to be changing the pitch as the delays happen. So it's kind of that more just detune-y kind of creepy vibe to it. So time number, or for the time one over eight, fine, zero, input volume, zero, intensity, which or feedback, 0 0.350, stereo spread, 0 0.040. And the dry wet at maximum is going to be 0 0.20 because all the effects are going to be mapped to this first macro over here. Next, it goes into a shimmer. Now, usually shimmers are beautiful and ethereal and wonderful, but this one is actually going to be the opposite because here we're pitching it down an octave as opposed to going upwards. So really take a listen. Once the note hits, really take a listen to the background of what's going on here. So we almost hear like that slight kind of droning at an octave below. It's kind of dissonant. What you can also do is you can also kind of maybe do something a little offset, something not exactly an octave. And make it a little bit more creepy. That's totally up to you. But default, it's going to come at minus 12. So one octave there. The feedback is going to be 0.5, size 50%, modulation 1, high pass frequency 200, low pass frequency 4052 hertz, the ducking 0.132, and the stereo width 0 0.750. The dry wet maximum is 0 0.20 as controlled by the first macro. And then last but not least, we're sending the shimmer into a reverb to reverberate that shimmer reverb. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. We want to kind of reverberate the reverb. Whatever, that's kind of what happens here. Now, the pre-delay is at 20 milliseconds. We want a little bit of time for that triangle wave to poke out. And then the size is 1, DK 0 0.460, stereo width 0 0.5, the high pass 200, low pass 2582 hertz, and damping is going to be 0 0.6. 
Dry wet maximum is going to be 19% or 0.19 for the macro, which is again tied over here. Now, all of this is going to be ran through this distortion down here. If we look over at our synth page, we can see that filter one is going to filter two, which is this bypass. So then it's going straight to the effects, goes through all FXA, the tape echo, shimmer, the reverb, and then it finally lands on this distortion module, which is tape and the drive is cranked up quite a bit at 37 dB. And this dry wet's going to be controlled by this third macro intuitively labeled distortion. Now I left a lot of wiggle room to really degrade the sound if you want to, maybe like a fade out or fade in or whatever kind of effects you're ever thinking of doing that with. But normally I wouldn't put that much distortion, but I thought it was kind of cool with this like scary, creepy theremin kind of thing. So yeah. <laughs> And I think the last thing we should talk about here, if we go over to the keyboard, we have the glide time at 110 milliseconds. You can always change that to taste or remove it entirely, but I think the glide really works to make it a little bit more scary and it kind of fits more with this patch here. So if you'd like to get the scary theremin for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. So yeah, hopefully you learned something from this very simplistic patch. It's kind of fun to play, very easy to make, and it sounds kind of cool. So with that being said, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.